Hi everyone, this is Katie Ann, elite athlete with Porn Nutritionals, and today I'm going to be taking you through an upper body session. This is a typical push day for me, so shoulders and triceps focused. Um, this was actually at Diamond Fitness in Columbus, Ohio, and um, as you can see here, I'm just doing what I normally do in a day in the gym. So what I first like to start out with is warming up on the bike or on the elliptical or either walking on the treadmill, something just to get my body moving, my body warm. It is currently winter in Columbus, Ohio, and so I find myself just, just typically cold day to day. Um, so it's a good idea just to get your body moving, get it ready, um, so you're not just going into your lifts cold. Now in the summer, I don't feel the need quite as much to go through um, go through as much cardio to warm up, but it's a good idea just to get your muscles activated. So as you can see here, I'm using bands. This really just gets the blood pumping, gets the blood flowing. I also take this time to see how I'm feeling. So using these bands, it's just, a, it's just lightweight. I'm able to see, all right, are there any tweaks? How does my shoulder feel? I've had a shoulder injury in the past, so just making sure that everything is moving well. Um, as you can see here, I'm doing lateral raises just with small dumbbells. So this was five pounds, I believe, on with in each hand. I'm um, doing some doing some rolls, um, shoulder rolls, and then also uh, some laterals, different types of shoulder movements, just with very light weight. Get my shoulders warm. Get my rotator cuffs uh, warm as well. I do rotator cuff exercises either with bands or with small dumbbells, um, which is a which is a good way to make sure you're working those smaller muscles and not just jumping right into the heavy lifts. So here is just a simple rear delt warm up that I am doing in the rack where I move into my first exercise, which will be overhead press. So I usually start out my upper body days with some sort of a compound exercise. So here for this day for shoulders and triceps, it was overhead press. So I don't jump right into the weight that I'm using. I do work up in weight. So there you can see I was just using the bar and doing a warm up set and then I progressively increase the weight as I go. So here I believe this was five pounds on each side. So 55 pounds total and I go through a set with this, and then I will jump up to my working weight. So the next weight that I worked up to after I kind of go through some different banded exercises. So if I feel like my rear delts aren't warmed up enough, or if I feel like my shoulders need a little bit more activation or something's feeling a little bit off, I might just go through some banded warmups. But here, this is 65 pounds, and I did sets of eight but it really depends on the day i try to hit a hypertrophy rep range so try to get at least eight reps on these movements um, for me with having a history of some shoulder injuries and shoulder issues i don't find that i can do lower than eight reps safely without feeling like my form is going to be compromised so i usually stick in the hypertrophy rep ranges which is primarily what i'm focused on for my shoulders anyways because of bodybuilding purposes i, I don't have a desire necessarily to work in those super low uh, rep ranges just for overall health and just overall safety for my shoulder. So it's important to take those things into consideration um, with every exercise you're doing. It's gonna be a little bit different for each person. So for me, what's best for my shoulder is to have um, a pretty standard width grip on overhead press and then really just work on, on activating my shoulders as much as I can during this exercise and not using too much of my back, too much of my momentum or too much of my chest. So I actually did finish this with a drop set. As you can see, I went back to just the bar um, and then finished out with a burnout set. So the next exercise that I went into was just a standard dumbbell press. 
Um, I like to do these standing. I feel I can get a better range of motion. And then I also feel like I can focus um, better if I take it one, one dumbbell at a time, one arm at a time. For a lot of exercises, as you guys can see, and then if you've watched some of my other training videos, I do a lot of unilateral work. Uh, primarily because I'm able to focus better on each arm as I perform the, the exercise and the motion, but also because it allows me to move a little bit quicker. So here you can see I'm doing my right shoulder and then I go to my left shoulder. Well, that time that I'm resting in between is actually time that my other shoulder is not doing anything so I can move right into the other set. So I like to keep a quicker pace, especially for um, my hypertrophy days, if I'm moving in more or if I'm working more in the strength rep ranges, which currently I am not just because I am um, in a bit, I'm in a more of a volume phase in my training right now. But if I'm in more of a strength rep range, then I will take more time in between sets. But with hypertrophy, I find I can move a little bit quicker. I also enjoy just the push and keeping the intensity up. Um, it feels good to just get my body moving, uh, feel like an athlete, feel like I'm pushing myself and not necessarily taking a ton of time um, in between each set. So here, as you can see, as I get to my, to my reps later on in the set, um, I use a little bit of momentum and what this helps me do is just be able to get the dumbbell up to the top and then I control the eccentric a little bit. So this is the second exercise that I did um, for, for shoulders. I like to do these after overhead press because I find that overhead press is a little bit more taxing. So usually with my training sessions, I start with the most taxing exercise um, or the one that I feel as though I need to have the best form for or the most energy for. So for me, the, the exercise for this particular day was overhead press. And then next, um, were these dumbbell presses. So for me, I stick to what is what is most difficult first and then go kind of in, in sequential order as to, you know, next it'll be the second most difficult exercise and then the third most difficult because I want the most strength for the most difficult exercises. So for example, if on leg day I'm doing some sort of a, some sort of a movement, I won't wait until the very end to do the heaviest, hardest compound lift. I will do those towards the beginning and then do more isolation exercises than afterwards. Um, so here, I, as you can see, I kept a pretty quick pace. I did end up resting in between some of these sets a little bit as I went on, but I did complete, a, I think it was approximately five sets on each side. That's pretty standard for me. Now, the positioning of the dumbbell to the side of your, of your shoulder will depend, it'll just depend on what feels best. I don't necessarily believe in absolutes and how you should do different exercises. I think it's gonna be different for each person. Obviously, good form is key, but form for each person is gonna look a little bit different just based on how you're set up, based on your leverages, and also based on your injury history. So for me, having a shoulder injury in the past, I find that having a bit wider or my elbow out a little bit more um, feels best on my shoulder. And so I do utilize, utilize more of a, a standard pressing form, but other people who may have shoulder impingements in a different way might find that a supinated grip works best for them. So next I moved into more of isolation exercises. So as I mentioned, so these are lateral raises with, with dumbbells. Um, I start out a bit lighter and then work up in weight. Um, as I mentioned, I do start out with more compound exercises and then move into the isolation exercises. So here, doing lateral raises, I prefer to do these um, unilaterally as well, so doing one arm at a time. And as you can see here, I am holding onto just something for stability. Um, leaning off to the side, I find that I'm able to disengage my traps and focus more on my shoulder. So a lot of times with lateral raises, a tendency can be to swing up too high 
and then actually engage your trap a little bit and, and have it overpower your, your lateral raises as opposed to just focusing on your shoulder. So as a result, I find this setup is best for me. Um, you can also do lateral raises with cables. You can do lateral raises with bands. It's just important that you feel the intensity when you're doing this. It should not be something that you're just going through the motion. So as you can see here um, and through most of my exercises, I keep the intensity up. I'm not just, you know, dilly-dallying in the gym and just kind of like doing motions randomly. Um, I have a purpose when I go into the gym and I have focus. And so, you know, I might see friends and talk to them um, in between sets or before or after my workout, but I really try to stay focused, especially during my exercises. Um, it's not a good idea to try to do multiple things at one time. Um, it's been proven that humans are actually very terrible multitaskers. So for me, I am definitely, definitely a uh, strong case for that. <laughs> so I like to do one thing at a time. So for me, if I'm lifting weights, I'm focusing on that and I'm really giving it all, my all and giving it my intensity. And it doesn't matter if it's an overhead press or if it's lateral raises or leg press. Um, so for me here, even with these small dumbbells, you can make, this is, this is hard. I mean, just because you're using small dumbbells doesn't mean it's going to be an easy, um, an easy exercise. Um, so I like to keep the intensity up as I mentioned. So at keeping the intensity up, my rest is going to be less than, um, than something where I'm working in the strength rep ranges. And that also means that I might be using a little bit lighter weight since the reps are higher, but I am still working extremely hard and, um, and really, really just pushing myself and whatever it may be. It doesn't matter if it's lateral raises, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, doing my cardio, whatever it may be, I stay focused, stay dedicated, and, and really push myself because if you, you know, nothing, if you if you want to stay the same keep doing the same thing that you've always done but if you really want a different result you have to you have to push yourself and you have to um, really test your limits and so here on lateral raises these are something that i have really been focusing on more so in this past season because of my transition and focus to a bodybuilding um, a bodybuilding season this past fall and then also here in the off season just adding in more hypertrophy work so as you can see here i'm just doing drop sets so a lot of times i like to add in drop sets just depending on how i'm feeling so this day i felt pretty good um, wanted to give my shoulders a nice burnout on the last set so what i'll do on the last set of laterals um, is take so let's say for example i was using uh, 15 pounds on each side so i might do 15 pounds move to 10 pounds move to seven and a half pounds and move to five pounds and just grind out as many reps as i can just on the last set so that'll be the last set only i'm not going to be doing um, drop sets on every set i usually just add those in for more volume and for something just to kick up the intensity another notch on the last set here I moved into face pulls and push downs. So I superset pretty frequently, but the exercises that I do end up supersetting on, so a superset would be from would be moving from one exercise to another. So two different exercises and not taking any rest. Now you can take rest in between, let's say you do face pulls. So this here is for rear delts face pulls, and then I'm doing push downs. So as you can see, I'm supersetting face pulls and push downs. Now you can either decide to take no rest at all and just go boom, 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 one to the other, or you could do one exercise, then exercise, take a little rest, and then that's one, one superset and then continue on. So it really depends on you, your individual preferences and how you're feeling that particular day. For me, I didn't take any rest on these. Um, I like to superset um, exercises that are not going to detract from one or the other in terms of my strength. So push downs, that's working my triceps. Face pulls, that's working my rear delts. So those two exercises are not competing with each other or competing for my energy for my triceps. So for example, I wouldn't superset push downs with overhead dumbbell extensions, um, another tricep exercise. So I try to do different muscle groups when I, set, when I superset. 
So for leg day, for example, I'd superset maybe a hamstring exercise and a quad exercise. So here for face pulls, I like to imagine pulling the center of that cable to my chin. It can be easy to swing and use a ton of momentum on those and actually engage more of your back versus your rear delts. Um, but if I actually try to envision pulling that center section to my chin, I find that I get a better engagement on my rear delts and a more effective pump, a more effective um, just utilization of my rear delts in that exercise. For push downs, I like to start, so for triceps, I like to start with some sort of a, um, a bit heavier of, a, um, of an exercise. So for push downs, I was loading the weight up heavy, as heavy as I could for hypertrophy rep ranges. So I believe I was doing um, sets of, oh, 10 to 15 there. It really depends on the day and how I'm feeling. So as I have kind of talked through this exercise, you'll notice that I say, depending on how I'm feeling. So it really depends on each day. If I'm totally gassed one day, I'm not going to be able to do the same weight that I might be able to do another day where I have more energy, I have more sleep, you know, nutrition's on point. If I'm working out at a different time, if, if I'm working out when I'm traveling, I just have to take those things into consideration and realize that I'm not always going to be the same strength day to day. Oh, I'm showing off a little bit of pump. So uh, I, I, my standard stack before I lift is always pump and fury. This actually was training at night, so I only had pump, but as you can see, still, still pretty effective um, and getting, getting a really good pump. So it depends where you are in your training and what your schedule is, what you're doing. I'm not gonna expect myself to go into the gym and perform the same every single time. So depending on how I'm feeling, how recovery is, how sleep is, what my body weight's at, that also affects everything. If I'm in contest prep, I realize that my goal is to maintain as best um, training performance as possible and still train like an athlete if I can. But I realize that my strength likely is not going to be going up as my body weight goes down. But in the off season right now, so I'm currently recovering from my, my season of competitions in the, this past fall and I've put on some body weight, but I'm pushing myself and I'm expecting myself, you know, to consistently just work up in strength because my body weight's going up, my food's going up. I'm, I'm focused on making those improvements for the next time I step on stage, but also because I love training. I just simply enjoy it. Um, I enjoy pushing myself. I, I don't want to just go into the gym and just uh, just kind of like wander around and just, and just go through the motions. I want to push myself. I want to feel like an athlete. And so if you really channel that, that inner desire to just to, tr to push yourself, push your physical limits. Um, if you're healthy, if you're strong, you're able to be in the gym lifting, like that's, that's a blessing in itself. And I think that we should take advantage of, of those blessings in our lives, no matter what, what they are. And as, as simple as it sounds, being in the gym, being able to lift weights, that's a pretty, pretty awesome thing. So I want to be able to take advantage and not, not throw it, throw it away. Um, so for me, it's pushing my body as much as I can, but that means some days I might back off if I'm not feeling it or if I feel like I'm going to compromise my form and potentially get injured. Um, so here I super, I did a super set, um, as you can see, and, and as I talked about, but I kept the intensity up the whole time and um, did five sets of each and did a little bit of a drop set, but there's nothing like that. There's nothing like feeling like you're pushing yourself in the gym, pushing your physical limits. And just being, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to just go into the gym and feel strong and lift more weight than, than you ever thought you would be able to. If I think back to years before um, when maybe I was first starting out, I never dreamed I'd be able to lift this much weight. So it's amazing what little things are. Every single day it adds up. So the next tricep exercise that I went into um, was overhead tricep cable extensions. So this is going to hit a bit different part of the tricep head than the push downs did. So I usually do two exercises for triceps per tricep day and um, move from the most difficult one, which was the push downs, to the overhead tricep extensions, which are a bit easier. And here I did another superset. So as you can see, I'm supersetting with cable curls. So as I mentioned before, I like to superset exercises that do not compete with each other or do not um, take away energy um, for whatever I, whatever the other exercise is. So here, as you can see, uh, doing abs, that's not gonna take away from my overhead tricep extensions. Um, it's not going to fatigue my triceps at all. 
but adding in, I usually actually add in recently have been adding in approximately three sets of abs for five days per week. It's just been a consistent thing that I've, a goal that I've set for myself because I've been not consistent in the past. Um, you know, just because I've been training for years doesn't mean I, I am perfect in my training. Um, there's still things I need to work on and things I need to add in and improvements I need to make. And even though, you know, someone might say, oh, well, you have enough definition here. You have enough whatever muscle mass. Well, it's, it's also about personal challenge and pushing your limits. So for me, it's a personal challenge to stick to this and to stick to my program and to, to complete my abdominal exercises and not, and not skip them. And as I mentioned, taking advantage of being in the gym, taking advantage of just the opportunity I have to improve each day. Um, so for me, it's been it's been a welcome addition and something I've enjoyed, just being more disciplined and adding that in. Something that I have skipped, <laughs> I admit to skipping it in the past. Um, so overhead tricep extensions, I completed four sets of these. Usually my, my exercises for biceps and triceps start with five sets of some more difficult exercise and then move into one that's a bit easier for uh, for four sets or depending depending on on how it goes um, usually about three to four sets with a bit higher reps repetitions here on on these you can see with the cable um, cable crunches I keep my arms pretty much in place it can be easy on these to use your upper body momentum and not use your abdominals quite as much as you as you should. So one tip that I like to think of is just really trying to keep my arms in as stable as of, of a position as possible and using my abdominals. So I close my eyes for a lot of exercises actually. I find that I can focus better on the muscle that I'm trying to engage and not resort to excess swing or to let's say as I just mentioned for the cable crunches, using my arms. So if you're just going through the motions and you're kind of you know distracted or chit chatting, um, you might not be actually getting as an effective exercise as as you possibly could. So to finish up my workout, I like to add in blood flow restriction. So what blood flow restriction is is using so bands as you can see on my arms these are called quick release tourniquets and you can actually find these for really cheap on amazon so just if you google quick release tourniquets you'll they'll pop up they're actually medical um, they're used for medical purposes but you can also use them for blood flow restriction so the, the essentially the idea behind blood flow restriction is pulling the blood in whatever muscle group that you are working and it creates a hypertrophy effect with less weight um, but you utilize a higher repetition scheme. So for me, I do one set of 30 followed by three sets of 15, no rest. And I supersetted overhead uh, dumbbell shoulder press with bicep curls. So I, as I mentioned before, was supersetting two exercises that do not compete with each other. So that would be overhead press and then bicep curls. And it doesn't look like this would be challenging, but I can tell you it is, it burns pretty darn bad. And, the, and the, that is exactly why I keep it to the end of my session. So I usually only add this in for one to two exercises at the very end of my session, if at all. It just depends on the day, how I'm feeling. This can also be a really good tool to add in if you're recovering from an injury. So with blood flow restriction, you only need to use approximately 20% of your uh, estimated one rep max. So I don't know what my one rep max is for overhead press. I don't know what it is for bicep curl, but I can estimate based on how this feels after 30 reps on the first set, if I'm in the right, the right uh, weight range. So for overhead press, I use about 10 to 15 pounds in each hand for, for the dumbbells. And then for bicep curls, I'll use anywhere from seven and a half to 12 and a half pounds on curls. That's usually a good range for me. So just play around with it. You want to be able to complete the first set of 30 um, effectively without feeling like you're going to burst your arms open or something. <laughs> it burns pretty bad. Um, but you don't want to wrap too tight with a quick release tourniquet that you are losing circulation in your arms. So this is actually a very well researched method of training. Um, if you are interested in learning more about blood flow restriction, then you can look up Dr. Jeremy Lenicky. He is one of the top researchers on blood flow restriction. 
um, and it can be an effective tool to add in for lower body, lagging body parts if you're injured, or if you just really want a good pump. So uh, for me, it's a combination of all kinds of things because I have a shoulder injury, um, but I also want to add in something up with a bit lighter weight and still reach hypertrophy benefits. So that is the main benefit of blood flow restriction is that you can add this in um, without, without using a ton of heavy weight and you can still reap the hypertrophy benefits. So I hope that you guys enjoyed just following along for one of my upper body sessions and seeing me keep the intensity up in the gym um, and give a little bit of insight to my training. I Training is something that I absolutely love and just really enjoy and I, and I enjoy going in the gym and crushing it every day. So representing the representing core nutritionals and, and the crush it lifestyle. So um, so make sure you guys are, are doing the same and, and hopefully some of these tips can help you guys out as well and, and enjoy. Mm -hmm.